Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I wanna show you how to take epic shots of car interiors, just like this one you're seeing right now. So car interiors can be really hard to photograph because um, they're pretty dark inside usually. Even if you've got the interior lighting of the car, some areas might be really bright where others are dark. Um, if you do it outside, you get a lot of piercing light coming through. Now don't get me wrong, you can do this outside, um, but if it's a really, really sunny day, you might struggle because you're gonna get um, really bright lights across the dashboard, the seats and things like that. So I prefer to do this in a controlled environment or at night. If you are gonna do it outside, I suggest you do it at night in your driveway or something. Um, but what we're gonna be doing is painting with light. So it's not just a normal photo. We're gonna be doing some special things with some light, which I'm about to show you. Um, so yeah, I prefer to do it in the garage. And what you wanna do when you are shooting this, you pretty much want the area you're photographing the car interior to be in, uh, pretty much pitch darkness. So let's get started. All you need is a camera that's capable of shooting a reasonably long um, shutter speed, or it's not even that long in this case. Um, and what you wanna do is, uh, it depends whether you want the car interior lights on or off. So I like to have them on because it just it just obviously adds a nice glow. With them off, it's a little bit boring. So what I did, I turned the interior lights on and then I set my camera to expose for those interior lights. So when I, sorry, when I say interior lights, I don't mean the overhead lights and things like that. I mean the lights that come on when you turn on your headlights. So um, where your speedo is and all that kind of stuff, where your radio and air, con air conditioning controls and all that stuff are. That's what I mean. So leave your interior lights as in the overhead lights, the map lights and all that, leave those off. And like we're in here now, there's lights on because I'm filming myself, but if I was doing this um, properly, I'd actually have all the lights in the garage off as well. Um, so what you'd wanna do is, like I said, turn your lights on, your parkers or your headlights, and set your camera to expose for the lights on the dashboard. So the settings for me right now, ISO 100. So you wanna be shooting as low an ISO as possible to get the best quality. Um, I shot at f8 and the reason I shot at f8 was because um, I wanted to get rid of some light but also I wanted more things to be in focus in the frame so as you probably know um, a lower f number so if we shot at f1.8 it means less things are in focus so if we're focused on the steering wheel then everything behind the steering would be completely out of focus whereas with f8 um, a lot of things are in focus probably about three quarters of the way into the photo and then it starts to soften off focus at the back. Now you can go as low or as high as you want, depends on the effect you're going for, um, but I went for F, uh, with F8 for this one. And then I have a shutter speed of 1.3 seconds, so it's a bit of a longer shutter speed. Um, you definitely need to be on a tripod for this because with the shutter speed that I'm using right now, which is 1.3 seconds, um, there's no way I'd be able to handheld a shot for that long without any motion blur. But we're also gonna be taking more than one photo, so the camera cannot move. So another setting I suggest if your camera has a self timer, so a timer before it takes the photo, I suggest you turn that on. Um, with this camera, I set a two second timer. So once you hit the shutter, it counts down to one zero, then it takes the photo. And that's just in case I shook the camera or shook the tripod when I hit the button. Um, the two seconds allows the, the tripod or the camera to calm down from shaking before it takes the photo. So once you've got, you're in darkness, basically, um, you wanna set your focal point. So because you're gonna be in darkness, you can turn on a light temporarily just to set your focus point. Or now what I have here is a Yongnuo. So it's a um, Chinese brand of a, like a strip light kind of thing. Really good for photography and videography. Um, this one, you can change your color temperatures and things like that. With this one, I just shot it with the daylight color temperature, which is like 5,500 Kelvins. And what you wanna do, um, you can do this with a window down, the door open, whatever you want. I did it with the window down because I wanted to capture a little bit of the outside of the door and the top of the door trim. Um, and composition, you can do whatever you like. I like to kind of shoot it so I got the whole um, front of the interior in, so just over the front seat kind of thing. And uh, you need to be wary of what's beyond the windscreen as well because if the camera, the camera may pick it up. So in my photo, the one I showed you at the start, which I'll put up on the screen right now, um, you could see the garage, which looked a little bit ugly in the photo. So I just photoshopped the city lights kind of thing into it, which looked really nice. But um, yeah, if that does happen in your photos, you can kind of flag things off or, or block things from coming through the windscreen and stuff like that. But um, yeah, if you're in a really, really dark, the reason that happened to be totally honest was because when my parkers were on, they're actually reflecting off the garage wall. So the actual garage was kind of lit up around this area. So it did spill back and you could see through the windscreen. But if you're doing it in a really, really dark environment or you do cover your headlights, 
um, then you'll be fine. Now, another mistake I made is I didn't take everything out of the car. So I obviously clean the car as good as you can. So um, I detailed this last week sometime, haven't driven it much since. So it's really, really clean at the moment, but I did leave my mask in there because um, we're currently in lockdown. So everywhere, everywhere we go, we need to wear masks at the moment. Um, so I accidentally left that in there and I accidentally left a couple of USB cables in there, but it was just for a bit of fun. But if you are doing this professionally or to be serious, um, take everything out that's gonna look a little bit messy and um, start from there. So as I was saying, you can have the window down or the door open. Now what you wanna do is set your focus point. So what I did, I wound down the window here. I shone my light in on the interior and I tapped somewhere on the screen where I wanted the camera to focus. Now you can put it in manual focus and manually focus, but what I do highly suggest you do is make sure the camera is in manual focus for the rest of this, um, for the rest of the time you're shooting the car. So once I got my focal point, I, I basically focused on the middle of the steering wheel, the BMW logo here. Once I had that set, I set the camera to manual so the focus wouldn't change the whole way through the, the rest of the photo shoot. Um, the reason we don't want to move the camera and you don't want to move the focus and you don't want to play with the settings anymore is because we are going to be combining a whole bunch of images in Photoshop. So that's how this works. It's like a composite of a few different images. So that image I showed you before, the one I did of this, um, you can see how the light just looks really, really cool. It's not like a bright light from one direction. You can see the lights coming from all sorts of different directions. The interior is lit really nicely and it's given that interior that mood um, of how it actually feels to sit in the car with you know the lights coming in through the windows and stuff like that, which is hard to get on camera, but this is the best way of getting it in my opinion. So by now you've got your camera set to expose for those interior lights we're talking about, not the overhead ones, the actual dash lights. Um, and those were my settings. Your settings will be different uh, depending on your camera, the, how bright the interior is and where you're shooting and things like that. So just expose for those lights on your dashboard. Then once you've done that um, and you got your settings, so you're trying to go for a longish exposure. So 1.3 seconds was plenty of time. You might end up with longer depending on your lighting situation, or you might end up with a faster shutter speed. Try and aim for like one and a half seconds or a bit longer if you can. Um, not too long, 30 seconds and things like that's probably a little bit too long. So I reckon anywhere between one to 10 seconds, even 10 seconds is probably on the high side. One to five seconds, I think, is a perfect time for shutter speed. So if, let's just say you do have a shutter speed of 1.3 seconds and it's still too uh, dark inside the car, then, or like you haven't exposed for the dashboard properly, then you might need to uh, open your aperture a little bit or bump up your ISO a little bit. So um, yeah, they're basically camera basics. So yeah, just play with that. So now we're gonna start by taking the photo. So what you wanna do, make sure the camera is completely locked off. You're focused on your focal point. You're not gonna touch the settings anymore and you're not gonna move the camera at all. All you're gonna be doing is touching the shutter button. If you have a remote shutter or a phone app to take the photo, now's the perfect time to use that. So for photo one, that's just the uh, dashboard lights exposed, which I'll show you right now. So that's the photo we've taken. And then for photo two, what you wanna do is just light up another part of the car. So if for, for instance here, we wanna light up, let's just say this part of the dashboard. We've got 1.6 seconds. I think it was 1.6, did I say? 1.3 seconds, sorry. So 1.3 seconds is quite a long time. If you're to shine the light, it's basically one. It's that long, so it's quite a long time. So what I did with mine, uh, 1.3 seconds, so for one shot, let's just start the shots over again. For one shot, I got the interior of the car um, with no lights, nothing on, the garage completely dark, and I just, um, like I said, I exposed for those uh, dashboard lights. Shot two was me, just for one second, just waved over this side of the dash, and I did it through the windscreen, just like that. And then shot two, I went over and did the same thing on this side of the dashboard, and then um, what you want to try and do as well is try not to get your light source in the camera because you'll see the streak of light. So my camera was pointing down here. I had the camera high enough, uh, the light up here high enough that the camera wasn't capturing it. Um, you can use a, I didn't talk about the lights. So I apologize for that. You can use a phone light, a torch, any kind of torch. Um, but yeah, these are really good because you can control the color temperature. So it's like a daylight color. Um, it comes out really good. Um, yeah, so what I did next is took another photo. I stuck my hand in the car. Sorry, my window's up at the moment because I'm just, I'm not actually taking the photos now. I've taken them previously. I'm just explaining you how I did it. But I had my window down and then I basically went down the driver's seat, just like that. Next photo, down the passenger seat. Uh, I think the photo after that may have been the passenger door and that side of the car. Uh, I did it through the inside of the car. You can jump in the back seat, do whatever you want to get the photo. And then I believe I did the center console. So where the gear stick is, 
I'll just run the light up there. This whole time, I'm not touching the camera, not touching any settings. All I'm doing is hitting the shutter button, that's it. And then one of the photos I did was the uh, driver's side footwell area. So I just got the light and basically placed it down in the footwell of the car and that lit that up. So yeah, those were all the shots. Basically, I think I had about, I'm gonna show you the shots anyway, but I think I had about one, two, three, four, possibly six photos that I ended up merging together to get that final result. With your light, you're gonna have to experiment with shutter speeds and things like that because 1.3 seconds was plenty of time for me to do like half the dashboard, the other half. Um, you could probably set a shutter speed of three seconds and do the whole dashboard, but I prefer to have more photos to work with with less areas that I've lit. It just makes it kind of easier to composite together later in Photoshop. Um, but yeah, if you have like a phone light, it might not be as bright as this, so you might need a bit of a longer shutter speed, so you've got a little bit more time to paint the area. Um, now, you don't have to just do this. You can basically go back and forth and things like that. You can do whatever shapes with the light you want, um, and you can experiment to get different results. So if I, let's say I shone the light this way, then we're gonna get more shadows over that side. And if I did it that way, we're gonna get more shadows back this way and things like that. So just experiment the light, check your photos as soon as they've been taken and just make sure the area of lighting looks decent. Um, zoom in, just check that it, yeah, it all looks good and that you didn't catch this light in the actual photo. So try and keep it away from the camera or out of the frame. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. So the next step is we're gonna jump into Photoshop. I'm gonna show you the images we took and then I'm gonna show you how to combine them together to get that result. So let's hit Photoshop. All right, so I thought I'd just start us off in Lightroom just so you can see the photos I've taken. Um, I apologize for the actual video of me talking in the garage. I realized a lot of it was out of focus. Um, the camera was kind of far away, so I had to crop in in post when I was editing and yeah, it just didn't look too good in some parts. Anyway. So yeah, just in Lightroom here, um, I've imported the images that we took. So this right here, this first one here, um, is the one where I lit the left side of the dash here, or I, the right side, I should say. It was the left side from outside the car where I was facing, but the right side of the dashboard, this car's right-hand drive. So yeah, I was lighting up the right-hand side of the dashboard. Uh, the next shot here was actually the ambient shot, which is the one of just the lights on the dash. Now these are the lights on the dash I was talking about exposing for. So this is basically how you should set your camera settings at the very beginning. So like I said, ISO 100, uh, I was at 28 millimeter focal length, F8 for 1.3 seconds. So my settings didn't change for the rest of this whole uh, process. So yeah, basically, like I said, I exposed for these lights here. You don't want them too bright and you don't want them too dark. So that was really my first shot. And then the second shot was really this one. Uh, the next one was the other side of the dash. So the left side of the dash, passenger side of the dash there, again, lighting it from the outside. Um, it doesn't matter if there's, don't, basically all you worry about when you take the photos is what's happening in the area you're lighting. You don't have to worry about anything else because we're technically not going to be using anything else in this image, which you'll see a bit later. Uh, this next one here is the, this is where I did the driver's side um, seat in this area. So I just kind of swoop the light like that. And you can see the light up here, but again, it doesn't matter. We're going to be getting rid of that. And this next one, oh, uh, which one was this? This might have been the center console, I think. Or I might have done... Yeah, I might have done the driver's side again because I may not have been happy with that one. But either way, we'll sort through that. Uh, that's the passenger side. So you can see I've lit the passenger seat. A little bit of the console as well. This area here and the door. Uh, looks pretty nice. And then oh, that's the finished image. So don't worry about that. And then this here is where I did the footwell. And this I think was just... Yeah, so what I did later, I just took an image with no lights. So um, basically there was a, oh, there are my park lights on, they're reflecting off the garage there. I basically did an ambient shot. So I changed my settings. As you can see here, I got a four second exposure now, ISO 800. This was just basically just in case I needed something that I didn't get and also to expose for the outside of the car door here, which I used a little bit of. Um, you don't really have to do this. I just do it for safety, just in case I'm looking for something later that I don't have. So what are you gonna do from here? Just check that the white balance is pretty much similar across all your images. So the color of the light, it's pretty much white. So that's what you want. Um, you don't want the light to look yellow or anything. If you do, make the changes here. Um, sometimes what I do, I didn't do it with this image, but sometimes what I do is you can lift the shadows just to get a bit more detail out of it. But with this one, I didn't do that. I suggest you experiment without doing that first. And then if you've got issues with um, you know, something not looking that good, you can come back and adjust the settings. So basically, you don't even really need Lightroom at all. I just wanted to show you the images in Lightroom. Um, and if you are 
using Lightroom, I'll show you how to open the images from Lightroom to edit them. So uh, let's just pick the ones we're gonna be using. So, uh, then when you do, once you've selected them, so all I did to select those was press Control or hold down Control or Command if you're using a Mac and then selected each one. Then you can right click and go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So if you don't use Lightroom for this part of the process, you can literally just drag all the images into Photoshop. Just make sure they're all in the same document. So you'll see all the layers here, they're loading. So I'll come back when they're all loaded. All right, so all those images are now loaded. So what we're gonna do is just turn them all off and just find, we're gonna name them um, basically. So we know, it's just so it's easy to find where they are when we're working in Photoshop. So this one here, we're gonna call right dash and to rename them, just double click on them and then turn that off, turn the next one on. This one we'll just call ambient because it's just the ambient light of the car. This one here we'll call left dash. It's so much, so much of a good idea to actually name them because you'll be struggling later to find out what's what. <laughs> um, this one I'm going to do, let's just do drivers, even though I think I've got two of those and I might not need them. Let's call this one, actually, maybe this was the center console. Yeah, that's the center console. Sorry about that. It just got a little bit on the wheel, so it confused me a little bit. So let's call this center console. And next one, this was passengers. So this lit up the passengers seat and door, as you can see, and a lot of this center console area, the upper center console area there. And the last one here is the driver's footwell. So I'll just call that footwell. You can do the same in the passengers if you want, but I just wanted to do the driver side here. All right, so what you want to do first is the best thing that I normally do is move the ambient layer to the very bottom because that's what we're going to be building this image up on. So turn everything off. You should just have an ambient layer. Okay, so now that the ambient layer is at the bottom, what we want to do is select the turn on the layout, the next one above. So click the eye icon there and set the blend mode here to lighten. And what that does, it only allows the lighter parts of the image. So the lighter parts of this layer, only those are going to show through. So you can see that when we turn that off and on, if you go back to normal, it's not showing anything, but Lighten's just gonna show the lighter areas of the image. So next one up, we'll do the same thing here. So turn on the passenger layer, change that to Lighten, and you can already see it's starting to look really, really awesome. Center console, turn on that layer. So you can see if I turn the center console layer on, it gets rid of everything. It's hiding everything below it. So the Lighten, what that does is just only allows the light and part of the that layer to show through. So then we're going to turn on the drivers again. Set that to lighten. Left dash. Set that to oops. Set that to lighten. And right dash. Set that to lighten. So there we go. It's looking really really good already. But what you can do now to there's some parts that I'm not a fan of. So like the badge on the steering wheel is way too overexposed there. Um, I just want to add a little bit more mood. So I'm not going to go crazy on this. I'm just going to show you ba the basics and then you can kind of tweak it as you as you want yourself, basically. So let's just start with the footwell. So the footwell I'm thinking is a little bit too bright. It's taking away a bit of the mood. So you can see actually how good the footwell lit up certain areas like behind the steering wheel and stuff, but some of it's a little bit too bright. So what we're going to do is click that layer and then we're going to select here, add a layer mask. And what this does, for those who don't know what layer masks do, it's basically like an eraser, but you can paint things back in if you do make a mistake, basically. And the way it works is you select the brush tool, and whatever's white is going to be showing through. So you can see right now our layer mask is white. And if we flip that and paint with a black brush, it's going to remove things from that layer. So I'll show you what I mean. Set the flow to about... You can play around with this, but 10, 15% is probably good. Let's go 15%. That just means we're not gonna just put blobs of, like a blob from the brush. It's actually gonna flow out really slowly. So we can paint in really carefully. So you can see we've got our foreground color there set to black. If these aren't black and white on your computer, just select this, default foreground and background colors. And you'll see if we set this to black, wherever we paint, it's gonna get rid of that part of the layer. Only that layer, so as you can see, it's not doing anything else, but if we want to paint something back in, we can flick that by pressing this or by pressing X and whatever's white, we're going to be painting back in. So what I like to do here 
He's just get rid of anywhere I thought was too bright or I wasn't really a fan of. So in the footwell here, I'm not really a fan of this footstep. Just going to try and add some mood and darken down the bottom here. Maybe just this bit here as well. Just somewhere in here. So I'm just going to do this really, really quickly. It's not going to be as good as the actual one I finished. Just like that. So yeah, we've added some mood already. You can see we'll turn the layer mask off. Oops, wrong one. So actually, that's a good point. Uh, that's the layer mask. That's what I painted. Black is where I've basically deleted the layer. I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. So that's how it was before. And that's how it was after we painted the layer mask. Now it's a little bit messy, but we're going to keep playing around with that. So then we're going to go up to the next one. This is the passenger side. And I just like to turn them on and off and see exactly what we affected. And then from there, again, we can add a layer mask. We make sure our foreground color set to black. We've got our brush. And I like to have the brush actually on like 0% hardness and what size depends on your image, but it seems to work well. And I'm just going to paint out the really, really, the parts with these really, really bright highlights. I think it takes away from the mood. So this is the passenger side. So this is the, like up here, the door and things like that. Just adding a little bit more mood, just like that. Some of the light spilt over to this seat, so I'm going to fix that. And sometimes it's hard to find out what part, <laughs> what part of the image is on what layer, but we're going to get to that. So this was like this area. So as you can see, when I turn it on and off, this is where that really bright highlight on the BMW badge came out. So again, we're going to add a layer mask and with the black brush, we can actually get rid of that. And this, it's still a bit bright, so I'd like to remove it in one of the other layers. But again, this is the center console. So I'm just going to just paint wherever. Just have fun with it. And like I said, if you do make a mistake, so you painted something that you wanted to be there, you can just press X or this button here. And whatever you paint white will come back. So you can see if I paint over the wheel again, it's going to come back. But we want to get rid of that. All right, that looks looking pretty good. Driver side, let's turn that off and on and see what that's doing. So I like this area on the driver side photo. Um, this here is a little bit too bright and maybe some of the seat is as well. So again, I'm gonna add a layer mask. Black is our foreground color and I'm gonna paint out some of those things. It doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't look nice when you've got really bright like specular highlights. That's why I kind of dull them down by using this method and let's just go to the next one so this is the left side of the dash so a bit of the windscreen got touched there so let's add a layer mask just paint that out there a little bit again in this photo I actually removed the screens and put that image in behind it I'm not going to show you how to do that part but basically I just got the pen tool cut out the windows and put that image in behind so pretty easy Actually, let's brighten the front of the dash back up there a little bit. And then we've got the right side of the dashboard, so there. And you can see how cool this is because we've basically lit the whole car with one light and just a bunch of photos, so it's worked out really good. So again, add another layer mask and we're going to paint out, oops, got to flick to black. Some of this up here is a little bit too bright for my liking, so we're going to add some mood, just like that. Maybe this as well is a bit too bright. Yeah, it's already looking pretty decent, but now, like I said, this BMW logo here, it's still a little bit too bright. So what I'm going to do is go through the layers and turn them on and off and see exactly which layer is causing that brightness on the wheel. That's one of them. So we'll select the layer mask. Make sure you select this layer mask here. Black again is our foreground color. I'm going to paint on the wheel a little bit. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, that's a little bit crazy too, actually. So I'm going to paint some of that out. Okay, so it looks like the passenger side uh, photo was the one that's causing this real brightness on the wheel. So we're going to get rid of some of that. And there we go. It's looking good. So in my image, the, the main one or the final one, I spent a lot more time. I actually darkened the cluster a lot more and played around with a lot more things. I just wanted to do this basically really fast just to give you the idea. And then you can do whatever you like with it. So... um. Yeah, it's definitely not perfect. I think my final one that I did the first time was a lot better. 
But yeah, as you can see, we've like lit the whole car nicely. It's got this kind of like 3D effect, 3D feel to it where everything's just lit really, really nice and evenly. And um, yeah, I think it looks really, really nice. All right, so here's my finished image. I think it actually came out pretty cool. Um, like I said, I photoshopped in those lights and stuff in the background really crudely. It's not the best job, but um, yeah, I did that because you could see what was in the garage and it didn't really look that good. If you have a nice scenery outside, then probably look even better. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with the results. I love how the lights just come from all sorts of different directions. You can really see the texture in the leather, the steering wheel, the dashboard, all that stuff, um, the texture, the shapes. Yeah, I just think it came out awesome and it's a really, really good way of lighting and taking photos of a car interior. So hope you enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Thanks very much for watching.